Blessed afternoon to us all. Hindi pareho. Ah, the answers were not the same. There is some imbalance in the room. I repeat. A blessed afternoon to us all. Now we are okay. We are balanced off. So my... Oh, I just used this so that everybody is congratulated as a speaker. Now, this is the topic of my talk. Uh, it's a long talk, so watch out. This is in continuation of last year, if you were here. How many of you were here last year? Konti lang, just a little. So there are more new faces. So I was told by uh, Glenda to connect what happened last year and what will happen in my talk today. So, you see the title? Can you read that? Wow, it's, it does not show everything. Yeah. Technical difficulty. So, it says, Disruptive Communication Innovation for Philanthropy. And the case is Spring Rain. Okay? I just don't know how, how it is. But anyway, now, the, my second slide talks about what do you think is the essence of relationship? Because everything that you do is relationship, right? Even in philanthropy. If you're not as gracious as Glenda. <laughs> you see, you're laughing already, Ibrahim. Huh? How can you do anything? Or as uh, graceful as the bishop who knows what to do and teaches his priest on what, how to do philanthropy and get uh, organize all the events, he'll end up with zero. Or just cry and nothing is happening, right? So what is the essence of relationship? Good. What was that? What do you say? <laughs> Plain and simple, like you said it, right? Communication. Everything is communication because communication is the fabric woven in our being as we connect in all relationships. I'm sorry because I cannot stress this anymore. But anyway, I, I'll make do of that. So, it's woven in us. There's nothing you can do without communication. If your communication fails, bang! I'll show you more later on that. Now, it's plain and simple. And communication is continuous. You cannot stop. What do you call a person talking to, your, to himself? You know, right? Like that, you know? Therefore, all of us are like that because we talk to ourselves every minute. Which you call intra-personal communication. Like, should I go to the spring rain event? You don't ask somebody, you ask yourself first, and then you talk to your friends. Do I have the money? Ah, accountant, count tomorrow our money. See that? It's always talking to yourself because that's where everybody starts. And I'd like to quote this. And the word was made flesh is St. John's Gospel. I have to be careful, I have two bishops here, or a third one is coming. When I was studying the seminary, I was asking myself, why? Why did St. John use the term word? In the beginning was the word, and so with God, and the word of God, and the word became flesh. Why the word? Why not the power of God, the spirit of God, cha 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 cha? Nothing, just the word. And only later in life did I understand because God continuously communicates with us. God is relationship. That's why He incarnated Himself. To feel us every pulse. You know, thank you, Dr. Eng. Now I'm more energetic because of the detoxification, which I had an hour ago. You know, very helpful. Now, so what, what does that mean to us? Communication is simply common union, at least it's there. But remember, it's easier said than done because communication is unity in diversity. We're so different, my gosh. And another problem is this. We live in two worlds, right? What is the first world? The real world. The second world? The virtual world. Correct. There you go. And not only that, we live in the world. It's fast changing. It's so fast. Gosh, I tell you, at my age, sometimes I want to crawl, trying to hype myself to follow what's happening in the world, especially in the arena of communication. Difficult. See that white hair? That is 70 years in this earth, on this earth. See? 
very fast, even the language. Hmm? Now, everything in communication is made out of image. When you say, you're so beautiful, what does that mean? You're so ugly, what does that mean? If I ask you to draw anything about those two words, I guarantee huh, I can spend all the money of, uh, of all of you. But uh, I'm sure you will not lose because every image will be different. There can be no perfect meaning of an image in your mind about that. See? Now, when you hear philanthropy, what is the first image that comes into your mind? No, what's the image? Huh? Wow, give heart. Come on, money. <laughs> You're fooling around with me, huh, guys. Maybe this is the innovation now. But no, it's all about money, money, money. Even the bishop, when he, he started very well, you know, at the end it's all dollars and pesos and centavos, see? It's about money, right? Now, if that is so, we are trying to change that. And somehow we have changed it. Is it effective change? We will see. So, but the meaning of philanthropy simply is, which was said by the former speakers, love of humanity. That's the origin, the etymology of that, love of humanity. And the love of this humanity are two things here. First is to make this world a better place for all. A better place for all. But up to today, it's becoming a bitter world. Please don't disagree. <laughs> because I don't have to prove that. Look around. The wars, the poverty, this and that. Uh -uh. And humanity has changed. It has become negative, very negative. I thank the Lord because there are still people who are positive like philanthropists. And the meaning of philanthropy is not only the one giving money, you have time, treasure, talent, right? I'll talk about that later. But here you see, the issue is how and impact those two. If just look at your little village, you become microtic in your view, in bariotic, you know, barrio, you know, you're all here, kampong in, uh, in Bahasa. So, you cannot do that. You have to go global because the world has to become global. But, plus, you have a plus here, 40 years of giving history in billions. See that? Still growing. Now, can you read this together? We believe that philanthropy's acid test is not short term. Rather, it often operates best on long time horizons. So we especially want to learn from role models, which we are doing now. Go on. So we especially learn from role models whose impact took time to play out. These models were produced either as innovation or disruptive content, technology and or concept. All this can be expressed through communication. If you don't communicate, you just do it on your own. Nobody knows about it. I know this, when I was, I will not tell you the place because it's too dangerous. So anyway, maybe it's uh, Aurora province. That Aurora province where I was parish priest is the place where the NPA and the government forces, the military, both arm, keep on fighting. And according to the military, it was the worst place because high officials of the military died there more than in any place in the Philippines. I was there. When people get killed, nobody knows. It takes about three weeks to reach Manila. Who cares about us? Nobody. But when I put a radio station there, the massacre stopped. Because we have become national. We have become global. See that? Communications again. Now, let's create a better world for all. Creating a better world is based now on this. I did not invent this. I'm sure a lot of you read about megatrends. Nesbitt and Aberdeen. So, this was decades ago. It says, I'll read it with you because it's not there. But I'm worried about my videos. Ah. 
The greatest breakthrough of the 21st century will be caused not so much by the advances of technology, mind you, and not only that, but the increasing desire of man and woman to understand what it means to be human. It's all about humanity. Creating a better world is creating better humanity. And God, who incarnated himself, talks about humanity, how to be more human. Okay? Now, so what are the plus factors of philanthropy today? It teaches us to go beyond the me. Me. Modern technology teaches you to be me. Right? Look at your Facebook, your Instagram. Wow. Uh, you meet somebody like Ibrahim or uh, uh, Jasmine. Wow. Picture, picture. Then you put their selfie, groupie. Huh? Why? If nobody puts like, 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 oh, you're so depressed. How come nobody liked? Only 10 like me. So you call your friends, come on, please, like, like, like. Because, you know, it's me. Come on, guys, it's me. And the world has become so depressive, especially for the young ones and also the older ones when they feel they're so useless anymore. They're no more useful. It's also a great social connector. That's why here, look at this social connection that we have and more. Also, anyone can be a philanthropist. A philanthropist. Offer yourself as volunteer, volunteer time, volunteer talent, and volunteer treasure. Uh, also, the generational wealth transfer. Research from Boston College tells us that a conservative estimate of 48 trillion, mind you, trillion, not billion, will be transferred and moved from one generation to the next. What are the two next generations from us? M, that's that, who are those? Millennials. After millennials? Generation Z. After that? Generation Alpha. Okay? So we have three more. Now, according to statistics, which I have not really confirmed, at least in the Philippines, the millennials and the Generation Z are almost equal, and the Generation Z is growing faster now than the millennials. Because everybody thinks Generation Z is also millennials. Wrong. They are similar, but not, they are not the same. Therefore, I go to my talk. Disruption, it's a noun, according to the dictionary. Disturbances or problems which interrupt an event or process. For example, the schedule was planned to minimize disruption. See that? So we make a schedule so that there's no disruption. There's no damage. There's no obstacle. Synonyms are disturbance, disordering, the arrangement, unsettling, confusion. Now, I'd like to quote two of the guys in the world who talks about innovation and destruction. Anybody who knows about Joseph Scampetter? Okay, he was born in 1883 and died in 1950. He was the one who says, disruption or destruction, disruption, it's not really bad. It has to be creative. See that there? Now, later on, in the 1950s, this guy is still alive. He's about 67 years old now. A very good guy. He talks about disruptive innovation. Innovation, but disruptive. So we'll, 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 we'll show that. This guy, Clayton Christensen, he wrote so many books and that, 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 that. No, he's still, he's still alive. Now, watch, uh, read his book so you know better. He's uh, also from Harvard and all that. Now, the difference between innovation and disruption. Uh, well, you cannot read that. I have to read everything for you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Literally, uprooting and changing how we think mindset. Now, how your minds are formatted because of your age. So, how you think, how you behave, how you do business, learn and go about our day-to-day. Harvard Business School professor and disruption guru, Clayton Christensen, which I showed you, says that a disruption displaces an existing market, industry, or technology, including, of course, philanthropy, because we also do business in a sense, and management, and produces something new, more efficient, and worthwhile. It is at once destructive and creative. I did not say that, he said that. Now, innovation is simpler. It's just an improvement of something that has been there. Product, processes, ways of doing things. No? Now, my next question is this. All the members of the board and officers, shut your mouth. 
I'm only asking those who are not, who we don't belong to that group. What is the image that comes into your mind when you hear spring rain? Shout it out. Money. <laughs> OMG. Oh, my gringo. Come on. Well, obviously, at the start of his spring rain, I'm sure. When Glenda used, and the staff used to go around, everybody, when they see Glenda, oh, dollar. Oh, Japanese yen. Oh, uh, British pound. Ringgit also. Or uh, Singaporean dollar. Gee. But that is not spring rain. Because that's not innovative. And that is not disruptive. So my point now is to show you four things which I showed last year. But now I make it more succinct so that you can understand it more. There are four disruptive innovations we have. Well, it's not complete disruption because I think the only, for me, the way I, I, I research it uh, about the case of spring rain, maybe the only really disruptive innovation is our structure. Of course, on the structure, things will follow. Anyway, it's up to you to judge. Number one. So disruptive innovation here is new, revolutionary, effective, efficient, holistic, and strategic. All of the above is there. Huh? I start with the structure. Last year, I showed that we live as the web of life. That is the ecosystem. It's a web. It does not stand alone. Okay? Humankind has not woven the web of life where we are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves, to us. All things are bound together. All things connect. This is a quotation from Chief Seattle. He was born in 1855. He had a long life and he gave a talk to the UN and they were all flabbergasted with what he said. So Spring Rain as an organization has, see that? It's Echo system, which I will discuss further. It has also a web of life and deals with the betterment of humanity because it's uh, there. I just show you a graphic on this. Uh, it's not complete yet. See that? Ah. Spring rain ecosystem. Here we go. See that? Okay? That's who we are. Now we have to categorize that. And we have to systematize roles and relationships. You don't do that just by dictating. You don't just do that by giving a paper. You are this, you are that. No! You need very efficient, effective communication. See that? If you don't do that, nothing will happen. I, believe me. We'll go back to the, our old selves that we are not disruptive. We, we have the concept, but how do you push that? Because we already have it. Don't waste what you already have. Gosh. Okay. Just to show you, uh, another, my, just to, to clear up the meaning of ecosystems, everything individual, even the individuals within, for example, like our body is an ecosystem in itself. You have different organs and they have to work together. If your finger is aching, your tooth is aching, your stomach is aching, a lot of other parts of the body is, of course, connected to that. So we have our own roles, but we have to protect a whole. That's an ecosystem, and it grows bigger and bigger. You know, it's a bioregion and all that. You know, uh, that's useless. This uh, environment thing. But anyway, just to make it simpler, this one is simple for you. See? Remember the four, interconnected. You cannot do anything about that. We are all interconnected. I was talking to the driver uh, coming over. He said something like this. He did not know who we were. He was asking me, are you married? Was, oh, I, did, I did not wear my, my Roman collar. And then I said, no. He said, why? Oh, I travel so much. My wife will divorce me. You know, things like that. And um, it's a pity. It's, 
too much. I said, and very difficult to be with, 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 with a woman. I said, how about your wife? No. Oh, I said, do you fight? No, he says, because when I disagree with one word, she has 20 words against me. So what do you do? You shut up, he says. Just, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear. And suddenly, one of our passengers, sister, she said, Father, <laughs> so you are a father, he says. No, anyway, you see, communication again there. But we are interconnected. Nothing fails. You will know it later. So, second, we're interrelated, interdependent. That's why we have philanthropy, interdependent and interactive, interaction. But we have to become a harmonious whole in balance. So disruptive, number one is uh, Spring Rain has disruptive ecosystem design that you can read. Change the conversation, moral efficiency and effectivity, and the sense of synergy. There is a T here, T-E-A-M, translate. Together, everyone achieves more, see? And uh, one of my favorite quotes is this. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. I'd like to put it, the whole is greater than the summation of its parts. That's what ecosystem does. When you're good together, then it becomes bigger than just the parts. You don't just add them up together, no. You interrelate them to be, give a bigger impact. So as an ecosystem in a fast changing world, Spring Rain will have a disruptive communication plan, okay? Communication plan, not case the future. Now the second is the content. Brand racing, Spring Rain. What is the personality of Spring Rain? What is its positioning? What is its endearing impact? The, far, the first speaker, beginning from our chairperson, was very endearing, right? It doesn't hit your mind, your numbers. It hits your heart, because that's it. It's all about this. Somebody even said love, yeah? So, and then what is top of image? That's your brand, that's your image. I'd like to give you questions here. Number one, who are your clients? What benefits will our constituents get? What's your value proposition? Why should they believe or trust us? What is the long-range feeling our brand evokes? What do you want the brand communications do? So you must have a brand communication team. Take the, I cannot do it alone. Or run for staff. No, it has to be a team. The way we are growing so huge, so big with numbers, uh-uh. There are more questions. What do you want the brand communication to do, and what do you want the people to think or do? So on the, there, there, I have some notes there, which I read to you because it's not there. One to four is brand positioning. One, two, three, four. Five and six are brand planning. What do you, brand, what do you want the brand communications do? What do you want the people to think or do? That's your inspiration type. No? Now, the first part is who, 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 who. Now, another part of our value is this. Community cohesion, community building, exchange, converse. People will have to talk. Because the more you talk, the more you learn about each other. News, telling untold or forgotten stories. Stories are very strong. Huh? Local news, more interesting to the audience, to change attitude, beliefs, and practices. Okay, now, I go to the values. Uh, I don't know if this will work, but anyway, I'll try it. Stop. First, I have to explain. This film, just listen to the words now, because it will be half film. Uh, you, have, you might ask me, so Bayad, return my payment, you know, because it's only half of the movie. But this is a disruptive valuing, especially for Asians. No. It's value, but it's disruptive to many of us. Ah, let's look.
get some coffee. Just go up here to the coffee place and grab some. You're gonna leave without saying a word, no goodbye, no nothing. I love you, you know. I do, no matter what, and you need to know that. Yeah, right. What do you mean by that? I don't mean anything by it. Yeah, what are you trying to say by doing that? I'm not trying to say anything. Sure you are. For them, they're not doing me. What is there to say? I've been cheating on you. Do you want details? Is that it? Details? Just slow down, please. Just go out and grab a cup of coffee. That's all you I'm really asking. You really need to stop forgiving me like this, Jimmy. I'm leaving. Lisa. Lisa, please. No, here. Here's your ring. Would you please just take the ring? Come on, Lisa. After all those nights I waited up for you, you can't give me the time it takes to drink a cup of coffee? Jimmy, please. Just a cup. No. A single cup of coffee, that's all I'm asking. What is it with you and the coffee? You make it sound like salvation or something. I don't want coffee. Would you please just take the ring? Why don't you just take it to a pawn shop and hawk it or something? I'm not taking it back. You know, Jimmy, it's not just the infidelity. Your birthday? I wasn't at work like I said I was. I was with somebody else. Somebody else? You know what I mean. That pocket watch I gave you? I didn't have time to go get your gift. So he gave it to me. That was his watch. Maybe you ought to give that back to him. Can't you see what I mean? I tried to be a good wife to you, I did. But there's something wrong with me, I can't do it. And you're a good man, Jimmy, you deserve better than that. I don't want better than that, I want my wife. No, you don't. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, you cannot love this. Nobody can care for this. think that I'm stupid? And I can't see that you're a walking contradiction? And why can't I love you? It's my heart. It's my love. I can do with it what I want. I can love my mother. I can love watching bees suck nectar from a flower. And I can love your eyes when they're desperate and lonely like this. It's mine. I'm a laugh. And right now, I invest my love in you because that is who I am. I'm your husband. I am the man who promised you through thick and thin. And if you could feel those words in the way that I mean them right now, you wouldn't question whether I'm capable of loving you or not. He loves me that much. I'm only asking for a cup of coffee. You see, it's rather disruptive, right? Is that common? The wounded bride. Are you, people think, wow, it's the guy's fault again. But this time, see, but this is very complicated issue. But the bottom line is, it describes a love that is very sincere and true. And you can translate this not only on a husband-wife relationship. Look at the world today. How many people are still languishing? How many children are? becoming so bad that they are becoming inhuman even. So philanthropy against enter here, enters here. So that's one value. I just showed it in a, in a movie, right? And also this is already 
uh, given. Uh, well, so uh, I don't have to discuss this anymore. Uh, Father Provincial already expressed it to you. But here, I am blessed. Everything I have and am is a blessing from God. As a response, I have to share all that I am to those who need me most. Now, this is interesting. Can you read this one? Oh, here. Yeah. If you're in the luckiest 1% of humanity, you owe it to the rest of humanity to think about the other 99%. And that is Warren Buffett, right? And he said this during the World Economic Forum of 26, 2015, going 2016, when the study told us only 1% controls most of the riches of the world. See that? So even he said this. He's a billionaire. Therefore, when you go back to the values of, um, of um, uh, Spring Rain, we all know this, right? Bridging hopes, reaching heights, generating roadmaps, where visions come alive. See? And what does that mean? Need for self-empowerment. Need for communication from the ground up. Need for inf new information and communication. The need for communication as if people matter. People do matter because that's humanity. So last is um, the platform. What are innovative, you know, about that. Now, I'd like to introduce this to you. Uh, see that? This is the, the Philippines only, but it goes beyond. We have these 54 radio stations, and you are now a member of, uh, of uh, uh, Spring Rain. Uh, 57, right? Uh, yeah, because three was not approved there. Eh? I have to be very careful here. And I'm so happy because in the Philippine government, our new franchise, without the, uh, a franchise is a law of the land that they grant you um, the privilege to build radio station, maintain and operate it. No? So I was given another 25 years. It took me three years to do it, but you know, well, that's God's design. So we have another 25 years to do our job. And last time, I donated 3 million <laughs> airtime. Now, this is the end. Nobody used it, so we'll take it back. <laughs> but we'll plan for something new. So well, I'm, I'm just telling this because we have also this system in the Philippines. See, we can be rich anywhere because we have Ganvian Radio. We're via satellite now. So what I'm saying is, radio is still number one in the kampongs, in the rural areas, in the villages. Not in the urban cities, but we can also penetrate using smartphones. We can also go live stream. I have my, I have my weekly program, if you're interested. Uh, I have the best franchise uh, experts in the Philippines that uh, are my partners, and we give free coaching to enterprise. Every Friday from 6 to 7.30. You can just go on the Catholic Media Network on Facebook, and you get a clear picture of the discussion, and you can text us, you can email us, you can respond us over Messenger. What can this do? Radio is a massive communication resource, but once you go beyond radio, you can even do better. So this is also an innovation and also a disruptive communication channel for us. No? So what can it do? Inform, promote, link, gestate, monitor, and evaluate projects, all at the same time, present time. For example, I know this. Uh, there's a project. Your demand is given, even in government. And then the project ends. How long will the report come? Oh, oh my God. Next manager, they have to go back and try to, how come you have not submitted your report? Something happens on the ground. Because you know, when you do report, sometimes you, how do they call it? You make it shiner. But with the radio, you can go direct this day because you can get the interview. See that? You monitor it fast. Now, uh, but if you go beyond radio, uh, you, you go here. See that? Ah, sorry. Before the trends, um, I'd like us to read this. It is not technology which determines whether or not communication is authentic, but rather the human heart and our capacity to use wisely the means at our disposal. Now, disruptive technology, there are six trends. For those of you who are uh, techie, you know this. 
This is disruptive communication. Number one is social media. We have changed the way we live because of social media. Negative and positive. But many of us don't know how to use it positively. It's timeless. It's boundless. Crazy. Before, at, in the evening, at 6 o'clock here, at 6 o'clock here, you have somebody texting, uh, uh, sending you message, messages. I do my counseling now using PM. Okay? They don't have to go to my office. If it's very serious, then I, I go it, uh, eyeball to eyeball. But if it's not, you know, I save a lot of time. I can even do that in my smartphone. You can spend time, especially with the youth, because that's what they know, the screen. Different screens, split screens, whatever. But no more faces, just screens. So, uh, many other examples of that. Second is mobility. The mobile appliances. Everything's going mobile. I was having this uh, um, toxic, um, uh, what do you call this? Um, <laughs> detoxification. I was with Father Manny. And uh, both of us were looking at our smartphone, not talking to each other, right? Of course, I'm doing it, so I have to say yes. Next is big data and analytics. We can do this also for our philanthropy. You know, analytics, very easy. Uh, you just go there, but you have to know to interpret them. Next is the cloud. By no means, it's not the least. But you know, now cloud is becoming expensive. It will be a 35 billion monthly transaction. Look at when you have your computer, right? They give you free iCloud, then they now charge you every, every month, every month, every month. Nothing is free in this world. AI, artificial intelligence, see that? Uh, it's coming. Uh, Bishop also told about this. Blockchain, you know, like cryptocurrency. We all have this already. See how we are? We have this. We just have to use it and, and re-energize it. Therefore, we're using the hybrid technology. That's technical, content, build communities on the air. Social media, see that? Immediate connectivity, because it's digital. Teleradio, the radio is now TV. Broadband-based broadcasting, email, SMS, text blasts. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in the Philippines, now we have, I don't know if you're using it, you have, uh, I have about 3,000 in one of the corporates that I chair. Before, we have to send notice, notice, notice. Now, we have 10,000 phones. We just blast one text, everybody gets it. And when they want to respond to us, it's free. Everybody wants free, free, free. So I'll tell you, when you respond to us, it's free. Ah, they text back. If they pay, they don't text back. But if it's free, they text back. See that? The text blast now, there's a lot of this uh, new technology. So also have the FB, GC, other apps, Viber, WhatsApp, others, YouTube, no? Internal blogs, you know, the modern revolution enables everybody to become a journalist at the little cost, at the little cost, and with global reach. That's the prosumers and social media. Now, I'd like just to show you the digital platform. See this? That's where we should penetrate. We already have this, a lot of you. Some of you are already good in this. Now, everybody thinks that the next is Instagram. No, it's now YouTube, because YouTube also is a browser. But look at this. 166 million only, right? That is DAU. You need to bring up the DAU. Look at MAU, monthly active users. This one is daily, so it's Snapchat. It's new, but all the young guys are using Snapchat. Uh, the old guys can do it. You know why? Because once you upload something, it's removed immediately. You <laughs> cannot save it. Uh, but they're interested in that. Therefore, disruptive communication is an ecosystem structure like this. You know, membership, mission, multi-organization, spiritual, all that. Web-like ecosystem has both digital, analog, hybrid communication, and mass media. So, likewise, here, the growth of millennials and Gen Z as the generation to touch base. Uh, Vincent has been talking about this. No? Those two is the next generation. And they also got money. They also got inheritance. Sometimes they increase so fast in their riches. 
without them really investing more because they have passive income, see? Especially IT, right? Or apps. There are one billion apps being uploaded every year. Maybe it's two billion now, but that's two years ago. But one million also are being scraped <laughs> because they are no more uh, new and innovative. So we need also a funnel strategy. I'm just mentioning this because this is for our fundraising. <clears throat> Supposing you're using those channels. A funnel is, uh, one of you uh, were discussing with this, uh, she knows it. It's like a funnel, right? You have Facebook. You have, you, you bring in something, a graphic and all that, you get something like a thousand likes. Wow, that's big. No boosting, huh? cheating, because you pay. Just, just ordinary likes, 1,000. That's your capture. Okay, they like you, like, like, like. When they make a comment, that's engagement. But you have to answer that immediately. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you're interested, ma'am. Da, 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 da. Okay. They answer back. That's engagement. But it's not yet the most important part. The most important part is conversion. So that's the small. It's only 1% of your total capture. See? That's the funnel strategy. So you have to study that so that you can get a lot of donations or when they start doing work for you, they volunteer. That is the conversion rate, 1% from the capture. If you have 1 million, then that's huge. But if you have 1 million, you can do that follower of Twitter. But even though Pope has only 10 million, you know who's number one now in Twitter? Followers? Anybody? Oh my gosh. I'm a bit old foggies here. <laughs> you don't go to Twitter anymore. To my surprise, it's for more than two years now, she's still number one. The girl who sang Roar. Who's that? She, you know, at least you know the actress and the singer. So, but I was surprised Obama is number three. Why? And Trump is somewhere below there. The Pope has only 10 million anyway. Now, what's important here is we have to do communication plan, and there are two parts here. The internal and the external. I think Bishop also talked about that. You need an external, internal communication. Uh, like, for example, uh, there was this big conference. Yeah? And then the delegates came at night. They were told that uh, you wait for us in the lobby of this hotel, and there's an orientation. So some of the leaders came and asked them, oh, why are you here? We're in another hotel. Huh? But actually, we were told to come here tonight for that orientation, but there's nobody there. Question mark, why? So you know the reason? They don't even have a GC of all their members or categorized. You can do that easily. One click and everybody knows. And if you commit a mistake, mm, look, please. No, you need that info. Come on, there you go. I don't have a cell phone. OK, I'll donate one for you. Uh, analog, and there you go. So anyway, you have to have a communication plan external. Now, how do you develop a communication plan? Hmm? What we need, that's the first. Mapping your communication channels, utilization, effective, practical, constant communication, telecommunication, planning, right shop. This is not easy, but it's innovative and disruptive for many. How can you plan that for your organization? Internally, to facilitate efficient communication to aid in work. One of the problems is this. Who belongs to the internal? So we have to discuss that. And who belongs to the external? Actually, external usually are people outside your organization that you want to build up your image. But what is your image? Now, reasons for string rain to communicate. See those three? Fundraising, projects and programs, advocacy. But there, you have to know your resident debt. You're connected, engaged, and efficient. See? Now, communication can help avenues to meet your objectives, recognition of your ecosystem and visibility, increase your funding, recruit volunteers, your partners, organize communities. So these were the old things. Uh, this one. But this is new. Now, I'd like to show you another um, thing. It's the branding. Image, image, image. When you first hear about spring rain, what is the image? 
when they hear about your PDO, what is the image? Because sometimes it's so confusing. You just end up project, 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 project. See that? What happens? Because each project, you're done. I was asking around since yesterday. Nobody has a communications plan. What some of you have is media plan. When you have media, you have an event, basketball, then you promote that. Finish. Next. Then you promote that. Next. But what is your total communications plan that is long term? Can that be short term anymore? Things are changing so fast. And you have to update yourself with technology. You have to update yourself about mindsets, about how people think. I'll show you another video for that. And here, brand racing, organizational level. See that? You start with your vision, then your mission, your values, objective, audiences, positioning, personality, which I already told you. But the identity level is important because it's your visual identity and messaging platform. Without which, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, these are just the channels, online, in print, on air, in person. This is just the media part, which is basis. Now, uh, I hope this works. see that? How can you communicate with these guys when they grow up? You get what I mean? They, they are born with that. How many, how many organs do we have in our body? Anybody? Doctor, doctor, please help me. Anyway, these doctors will start fighting, but the latest is 78 organs. Now there is a 79th organ because of the, of the development of the human body. You know what? I'll show you the 70th. This one. <laughs> it's attached to all of us. Come on. Who doesn't have a cell phone here? You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be always? You're no more spring chicken, right? Like me. But you still have this. It's a need. Especially for the young, it's part of their body. You cannot cut it. They'll die. How do you get into them? Through the smartphone. Through technology, that's the secret. Uh, therefore, I just would like to. I just would like you to. Yeah, it doesn't work. Let's just. Uh, I have three more minutes, and uh, I'm done. Okay. See that? Be clear about what you want to say, as an organization, and how you want to say it. See that? Now, I just end with this because I don't want to. Where are you? Oh, here. I'd like to end with this. Go. Go on. When we're laying on our deathbed, you're not going to worry about how much money you had, how much power you had, how much prestige. You're going to see that that was all game, that that was all an illusion. The only thing that's going to matter is the impact you had on other people's lives. 
we are all on a separate journey. But the beautiful thing about our life here on this earth is at my funeral, they ain't going to talk about my success. They're going to talk about who Nick was and how Nick lived and how Nick loved and encouraged. Success is incredibly important, but even more important than success, it's having an impact. It's knowing you haven't walked the planet in vain. It's knowing that because you've been here, you've blessed lives, you've developed people, and you have made the world a better place. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart. And all that will be left of you is what was in your heart. Life is a mirror. And life gives us not what we want. Life gives us who we are. When you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. See that? That's philanthropy. See? So, this is just uh, my parting message. Together, we face the challenges to create major changes for the good. It's springing from the goodness embedded by God in us all. Good afternoon, everyone.